Well, bad news for Manchester City today. Edison will be out for at least four weeks. These are the ties that he is going to miss. Obviously, the aforementioned game against Newcastle in the Cup, Arsenal, then Villa, <coughs> and then at Sellers Park against uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, how big a deal is this? Oh, sorry, I was just hit the table a bit hard. My hands a bit sore. Oh, and you've got... <laughs> Such as my eyes. That's karma, you see. At the TV. <laughs> yes. Uh... Why don't we ask the goalkeeper? I mean, I, I, I don't... All right, then, shut up. Craig, um, shall I... I don't think it is. <laughs> I, I think it's a big... It's, I think it's a big deal for the Arsenal game. Other, right. than, other than that... And, and listen, I, I think Ortega has been an outstanding deputy to, to Edison over the last couple of seasons. The, the one difference... Yeah. Certainly, the, I, I've always said that Edison's greatest asset, certainly in this Manchester City team, is his passing range. And up against an Arsenal team who you expect to press high up the park, Having Edison being able to, to drill those 50 and 60 yard balls, I think may, may or would have proven um, in, invaluable. That being said, I, I get everything I've seen of, of, of Ortega coming in as a number two. I, I think he's been solid, he's been very reliable. Um, so there, there's not an awful lot to question. Other than, and again, Edison is the best in the world at this. How is Ortega able to expose? Uh, Arsenal if they press higher up the park as I expect them to. Why is that nonsense? Yes, obviously, because obviously you look at the opponents that... I mean, save percentage yes, I know. and yes. goals prevented. Yeah, I was trying to hopefully move on from that. I, uh, I spotted it and I was yeah. like, <laughs> my God. Uh, Mario, how does this affect the defence, having the number one goalkeeper out? <clears throat> I think, I think it can affect just uh, the security of what he's bringing, of course. You know, when you have your, your, your number one goalkeeper behind you, you know exactly what he's going to do. But I, just what, what Saka said, the substitution that they have, you know, you know they, he's, he, like the way, when he came on, I didn't feel like the game changed that much. You understand? Of course, there will be some moments. I think he might, you know, at moments that he holds upon maybe two or three seconds longer because he also has to work on his confidence. But away from that, I think City is at that level now. Anyone that comes in that team is a person or a player that can handle whatever is expected from him because that's why he is there. And I don't think um, uh, you want your number one, but I don't think it should be a problem for them. Listen, Arsenal coped at the weekend. All right, he made a mistake. But uh, made some great saves. Liverpool have coped, haven't they? Very Keller, much so. Keller has come in. Yeah. Uh, Carabao Cup final in other games did brilliantly. Made some good saves again yesterday. Got a bit lucky on the, uh, I suppose, on the punch. Well, he wasn't unlucky. It was a difficult scenario. Could have went anywhere though. But but they've coped. So City have to cope. They, they, defensively, and you know, we, we touched on this, mm -hmm. uh, and we saw it again yesterday. They haven't been at the best. I'm, I'm adamant about that. They have not been at the best this season defensively, and that is going to put a little added pressure on. OK, the, the goal came about from a, a hesitant back pass uh, from Ake, the penalty came about, but they have left gaps this year, so I suppose that's maybe going to ask some more questions about Ortega's starting position because of the way uh, Man City play. But listen, everybody else is having to cope, and you look at the injuries, particularly to Liverpool, and there will be no sympathy for this City side. Edison, of course, got that injury in committing the foul, which led to the penalty, Shaq. Yeah. What should he have done? The worst thing you could do is, is change your mind halfway. You, you commit, you hope that you get something on the ball, you hope that Darwin Nunes kicks it into your clearance. Um, well, once you find yourself short, then, yeah, you, you, you have to commit the foul, and that's a penalty. He took a right swing at it, didn't he? I, I think he actually he tried... To... I think he, he, he committed to yeah. it and then tried to stop. When he realised, do you think so? I, I, I think I think he could, he could have followed through a whole lot more. Um, yes, but kind of kind of stopped a little bit yeah. um, because he yeah. realised I'm I'm here's I'm the, close. The, here's the problem: when you ask goalkeepers to think, right? Thinking is the issue. See, thinking. Yeah. I was really <laughs> quick, Dan. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, I was <laughs> really <laughs> Mario <laughs> over that first ten or fifteen yeah, yards. Oh, really, that was I was you. really yeah. fast. Yeah, but yeah. also was never saw you at the NFL no. combine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shaka, you were you were oh. <laughs> You see, you see, but uh, look, because I, I agree with what Saka said, eh? he hesitated. And in England, we all know, if you second guess your decision, you're going to get injured. That's one of the first rules you learn, especially when I came. They said, if you go, go 100%. Because if you don't go 100%, and I think this moment, it was that. It was not a good ball, because I'm not going to say that the back pass was great. No. He invited, the, you know, Nunes to get on it. But he should have gone all the way. You know, yeah. you sometimes I said, goalkeepers, you make sure you take everything with you if you're going. 
<laughs> I, I, to, to that point, I think that's why he gets injured. I, I honestly think he checks his swing. Right. I, and, and as Mario says, when yeah. you do that, that's when you end up injured. If you're going to get injured and give a penalty... Go swinging hard, go home. If, if, you're going to, if, you're go, if you're going to give a penalty away, there's going to be collateral damage. <laughs> I, yeah. 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 No, yeah. Not to you. If you're a goalkeeper... He's you, right. If he's right. Yeah, if Greg, you're a you're player right. going in there, you think, he's going to do me here. Right. Yeah, he's going to... But he... Yeah, he, listen, I don't think we give Nunes <laughs> enough credit. He spotted it, he was yeah. quick, right. got there ahead of him. It wasn't good from City, yeah. from either player. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And to that point, I think there are a lot of players who have chickened out when they see the keeper coming. Oh, really? Uh, there, there's a there's a lot yeah. of players that, that would have yeah. put yeah. the breaks on right. when you see a goalkeeper coming off the line. In, really? That yeah. way. Intimidated. <laughs> well, you know, you know. Here's a big especially, draft especially at my pace. Here's yeah. a big draft goalie that's, coming that's in. Anything could happen. Uh, of course, what that all means, as we talked about yesterday, it's just one point that separates the top three with ten matches to go. It's very much all to play for. Uh, Mario, just a word on the game overall. Of course, you weren't with us yesterday. It was great, wasn't it? Oh my God, this is football. This is, you know, like for the ones that, that want to see more goals, it's not a good, a great game. But for the ones that like football, what a game it was. I enjoyed it from the first minute till the last. Just everything. I think two guys who are friends and then going at it and they really show you what friendship should be like. You want to beat each other. And in, in, a, in a normal way, that doesn't mean it will affect your friendship, but you just want to win. And what Liverpool did the second half... Oh, my God. I don't know where they got the energy from, but they changed the game and they, oh, I, I mean, Diaz could have been the star man of the, of the game if he finished some, some of his opportunities. But some of the things that he even did, his energy, I was like, wow. I really, really enjoyed And Van Dijk, I liked how, how comfortable he was and mm -hmm. how he stayed in control and making sure that his back line was in control too. So those two things were really, like, uh, very impressive for me when I was watching it. Uh, of course, at the end of the month, you see Manchester City taking on Arsenal in Manchester, Craig. What, if you're Arteta, have you learnt from the way Liverpool pressed City and how much can you incorporate that into your game? Well, as you know, I, you know we're talking about Arsenal this season, uh, I've said on here, I think they have been the best team at pinning other teams in their own half. The pressing game has gone to another level yeah. from last year. Now, with the game's at the end of the month, I think. Yeah, 31st, after Thir international break. 31st of the month. Now, it is away from home, it is at the Etihad, so maybe that's slightly different. But they have been so good at pressing, I wonder if they can take that into the Etihad. Because so you can make the argument that it was 50-50 for the rest of the first half. Once Jürgen Klopp figures that out, gets his team back in the dressing room, Liverpool were by far the better of, of the two teams in, in, in the second half. What's, the, the, what's the stop Arsenal doing that? When you Incredible. saw the pressing there, it was not just the pressing, it was what came at the end of it. They didn't get the goals, per se, but they created chances a lot of the times from the pressing. There's nothing to stop uh, Mikel Arteta and his side doing that. And, and, and that is, I think, a recipe to upset City, because if you let City... Right, think about the first, what, 10 or 12 minutes of that game yesterday. With City. When Liverpool and Jurgen for City, and Jurgen Klopp, mm -hmm. was, in his interview, was extremely honest. He said, we were two all over the place in the first 12 minutes, and, and City really dominated. If you allow that for the bulk of a game, you're, you're going to get beat by this team. But we saw in those clips there how mm -hmm. they were so... What's the word I'm looking for? They were so believing in it. It wasn't just going in ones and going, listen, we don't want to... We don't, want to, no. we don't want to send five yeah. or six in there because we might get played around. They were committed to it, yeah. They were committed to go in. We saw, and, and the one of the, the ones at the end, we saw Elliot going, and then it got played. Then we saw McAllister going, and then it was played out, and then they won it back, I think it was Gomez. Yeah. They were going in bunches. So they were pressing in bunches, and that's what really was impressive. It was intensity, it was three, fours, and fives, and that's the most I've seen City spill up and cough up the ball. For a, for a long time. I mean, there will have been yeah. games, but mm -hmm. that's the yeah. an elite level games. That's the mm -hmm. most I've seen for a long time, and that's not because City players did not have a good game or were not confident. It was because they were taken to an area that was uncomfortable for them. And the big question is, Dan, is can Arsenal do that, and are they willing to yeah. do that at the Emirates at yeah. the end of the month? So, yeah, to, keep going. To, to that question, I think I think Arsenal can do that. I think Arsenal can press the ball every bit as well as, as Liverpool do, uh, and, and, and have done for, for a lot of the season. I, I think the big question mark comes when 
if when Pep Guardiola starts to think, and, and Sydney in, in, in the in the Liverpool game, it was how how we moved John Stones between defence and midfield, just to kind of change things up tactically mm -hmm. in terms of selection. He could go with uh, Julian Alvarez instead of or alongside Erling Haaland, uh, so he can make tactical too. So how does Pep Guardiola adjust to that high pressing, given the lessons that, that he learned yeah. against Liverpool? And then the question is not whether Arsenal can do that or not, but can they adjust in game? In the way that that Liverpool that Liverpool did, or at the mm -hmm. very least, the way that Jurgen Klopp got them to adjust at halftime. Mario. Yeah, yeah, but, but you, you know what? What is going to be the key thing too? When we watched the Liverpool game playing against City, right? They had the high intensity and the energy was incredible. But what I really liked was when they won the ball, they still knew what to do with it. And at that point, <coughs> you saw the vulnerability of of City. And I almost guarantee you that club must have said at uh, halftime, we're going to go at them. We're not going to back off because everybody backs off. So as long as Arsenal doesn't back off and really go and also keep the tempo up, I think City was, was um, thinking because the tempo was high. It was so high that some of the City players, they can handle high tempo, but they, were, they did not have time on the ball like they normally have it. And can Arsenal bring that to them? Because any team that wants to play football, when you put them under pressure in an individual, you're going to give them less thinking time. If you give them less thinking time, that's when the difficulty comes. And that, I think, happened to City. And then look at De Bruyne, his reaction when he came off on the bench. Pep, come on, when did you see a, a, a coach go to a player on the bench, go and sit next to him? Because De Bruyne was that angry because he knew that I can affect the game regardless of what is going to happen. And Pep said, no, we need to make sure that we can handle this battle because the battle was changing from football. It became too like, hey, guys, this is going to be intensity. And I think that's why he took him off. Uh, of course, the big talking point, unfortunately, away from it, all you guys have said was the penalty late on. Just a word on it, Mario. I haven't met anyone who doesn't think it's a penalty yet. Mario? You don't often... I certainly don't yeah. often... Um, talk about Michael Oliver making mistakes, but I thought he made one there. If you're Arsenal, though, going into this, I know there's an international mm -hmm. break uh, coming along that we're all super excited about in a week or so. Uh, <laughs> That's when you don't want the TVs to work. <laughs> might be another bit of banging <laughs> on the table again. But, you know, if you're Arsenal, you know, you're looking at the, 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 the three teams, City, Liverpool, Arsenal. Uh, the only ones with victories in between those three are Arsenal. Yeah, they're Arsenal beat, done really well. They've beaten City, they've beaten Liverpool. The other two have drawn with each other. So if that doesn't give you confidence, and watching that game yesterday, right, and seeing... Because City generally are going to create chances against most teams, right? And they did yesterday, even though they weren't at the best. Uh, but they're also going to give it up more this season than, than certainly last year when they were, I think, pretty rock solid, obviously winning the Champions League and winning the treble. Yesterday was a great advert for Arteta about how to go about it now. It's down to him. Right. It's up mm -hmm. to him and the players. Yeah. If they don't have the belief yeah. to go to the Etihad mm -hmm. and try and get at this back line and try and pu push their game onto Man City, there's a fair chance they're going to lose. But my God, watching yesterday, I'd, if I'm an Arsenal player, I'd be like, let's go up there and get at them.